Shalom and greetings in the name of Yahweh. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name, singular tense, none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Ladies of the United States and in other nations, this broadcast is dedicated to us. Last week, we started a study on Jezebel and Delilah's influence on Yahweh's people. And one of the last things that we spoke of was the fact that Jezebel was a Zidonian, and Zidonians practiced antinomianism. Antinomianism means lawlessness. Now, we're talking about Yahweh's law. We're not sure not talking about the laws of this nation of the United States. This, the laws of this nation used to be holy and pure. But I'm talking about Yahweh's law. So, again, Zidonians taught antinomianism. And antinomianism is lawlessness in theology is the idea that members of a particular religious group are under no obligation to obey the laws of ethics or morality as presented by religious authorities. Our religious authority as believers, born again of the water and of the Spirit, born of the Holy Spirit, as in the second chapter of Acts, baptized in Yahweh's name, know that salvation is freely given, However, to maintain salvation, we abide within the boundaries of Yahweh's law. Please note that antinomianism is at the opposite end of legalism. A lot of people say, I'm not a legalist. Well, I am. And Yahweh's people who live strict and straight are legalists. And legalism means it's the idea that obedience, obedience now, real obedience to a code of religious law is necessary for salvation. Now, like we said last week, we know that salvation is freely given to anyone. Salvation is freely given to murderers, to liars, to thieves, to homosexuals, to lesbians. Um, salvation is free to drug addicts, to prescription drug addicts. Salvation is free to good moral people. Salvation is free to good religious people. And we have prime example in the word, Cornelius, as we said last week. He was a devout man. He prayed always. He honored, uh, he feared Elohim. He knew who Elohim was, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jake, and Jacob, whose only name is Yahweh. And he did all, he was even a fasting man. He had real salvation in as far as he came. But he didn't have the goods to see him into heaven. So Yahweh saw the integrity of his heart, told him to send for Peter because he's going to tell you what you ought to do. And while Peter preached, we know the Holy Spirit fell on them. They were all baptized with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. Now, just because you speak in tongues doesn't impress me. I'm watching fruit. I don't know you by your tongues. I know you by your fruit. And if your fruit manifests potty mouth, if your fruit manifests lies, if your fruit manifests pride of this life uh, in women cutting their hair and cutting off their long locks of hair and wearing men's apparel, then you don't have the same Holy Spirit that Yahweh has helped me to maintain through these last 37, 38 years. Now, I'm not throwing off condemnation to you. Maybe you've never heard that message before. I encourage you to study it. It's part of obedience for women to wear modest apparel. But Yahweh's people do believe that it is necessary to maintain salvation by obedience. As I told you last week, uh, I saw a little poster that says, Obedience is our gift to God. Who is God? What is his name? He has a name, you know, and it never was Jehovah or Jesus or Zeus or Buddha, Krishna, Allah, or anything else. His name, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, only called on Yahweh. Simple simple as that. 
And we know that that God, Yahweh, robed himself in a vessel of clay uh, to bear the blood for our redemption. And he was told by the angel to call him Yahweh because this was fulfilled by the prophet Yeshaya or Isaiah. So Yahweh's people are supposed to be legalists with a circumcised heart because we have not fallen out of love with him. Because we have kept the honeymoon alive with him. Alive. He has been faithful. Therefore, because of his gracious love and forgiveness, because of his great sacrifice, we do not justify a bad attitude. We do not justify sin of any kind. We do not justify disobedience to our husband. We do not justify anything evil. We come to Yahweh and say, hey, Abba, I had a bad attitude with my husband. I raised my voice at him. I've apologized to you, and now I'm going to go apologize to him. It's called humility, obedience. With the exception, if your husband tells you to do something contrary to Scripture, then you obey your first love, Yahweh Almighty. We left off last week with these words, that Yahweh's people are taught from a baby spiritually and naturally how to obey all of his commandments but the enemy of our soul only wants Yahweh's people to violate the word just a little bit just a little bit and a little bit more and a little bit more making his word multiple choice now some people don't uh, I've seen women through the years who um, they go through a trial they uh, get upset uh, somebody hurt them deeply who supposed to live strict and straight. And they harbored unforgiveness in their heart. And they said, oh, that's God. I don't want nothing to do it. The first thing they do is they go out and cut off all their long locks of hair and wear uh, makeup and jewelry so they can feel good about themselves. <laughs> that's not what Yahweh expects of his women. Instead of causing that hurt to go to bitterness... And then transgressing Yahweh's word, they should have gone to that person. And if that person came to you and apologized, then it's up to you to forgive. If we want Yahweh to forgive us, we forgive. And sometimes it's just not easy. It is just not easy. Now, I can relate from my own experience. Let me talk about me. Since I have known Yahweh, since I've been baptized in the Holy Spirit... I let a deep-rooted hurt go to bitterness and resentment and even lead me to the point of hate. And when I got that far and those words came out of my mouth, I threw myself on the floor and I, 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 I told Abba, I said, I am worthy of death because I am no different than a murderer. You know that's right. That's scriptural. One who hates is the same as a murderer. And I told Abba, I am guilty, guilty, guilty. And there's no excuse for me to be this way. No matter what anybody does to me or how they treat me, I am never to get so deeply hurt that it goes to that root of bitterness whereby many be defiled and even hate. I am to forgive. So I asked Abba to teach me how to forgive. And I would make my flesh do extra kind, nice things that I did not want to do within my heart. The whole time saying, Abba, you know where I am with this, but I'm making my flesh do the right thing. And I want you to remold my heart. I want you to smash my heart. And I want you to mold it back to that tender, tender heart that you expect of me. This is where we get in our spiritual walk. We become responsible within and without to make ourselves do the right thing and maintain the right attitude. And it didn't come overnight. Did you hear me? It did not come overnight. I had to regain ground that the enemy had taken from me. And I did what was so awful is I did not realize that I had gotten that far in a couple, four or five years. I didn't even realize it. And I had to reprogram and regroup 
and regain the ground and fight, 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 fight my way back to the tender heart, to the pure, clean, childlike heart of faith. And by Yahweh's tender mercies, because of his great suffering, I refuse to allow to justify an evil attitude. And Yahweh honored it and removed all that filth and junk from me. Now, where we left off last week, I wanted to read you. Deuteronomy 6 and 7. And it says, and thou shalt, I'm reading from a a specific version here. I forgot to mark which version it was. But it says, and thou shalt teach them diligently. What's the them? The laws of Yahweh. His word. All of them. And thou shalt teach. Now, we know that we don't have offer up animal sacrifice. We know we don't put blood over a doorpost because of Mashiach Yahweh, what he did. We know we don't have a Levitical priesthood. In effect, the priesthood changed because of Mashiach Yahweh. So those are the laws that we don't, we don't obey anymore. They've been done away. Those particular laws have been done away because of Mashiach's sacrifice. But the rest of the laws are still a lifestyle for our good. The dietary laws are for our good. There are many things for our good. Okay, again, back to Deuteronomy 6 and 7. And thou shalt teach them, that's the law, diligently unto thy children... And shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Now that's very close to the KJV version. I think this is one of those Jewish versions. Not sure. But um, please, diligently, mom, we are to teach our children when they are little bitty. Basically, Jezebel teaches faith and grace without obedience. That's what Jezebel teaches. And her good old little old buddy Delilah continually pressures the people of Yahweh to give in. To give in to their fleshly lusts and desires instead of mortifying, killing the deeds of the flesh through true obedience with a circumcised heart. Did you hear that? One more time. Jezebel, she teaches faith and grace without obedience. And we read about the assembly at Thyra Tower. They had wonderful works. They had charity. They had faith. They had service. They had patience. And then it named works again. But thou sufferest that woman Jezebel. She's got faith and grace and works. And if you live next door to that assembly, you'd think they were heaven bound. Who in the world gives anybody a right to say that at a funeral that they're in a better place? Who are you that says that they're in a better place? How do you know? How do I know? I don't know. And you don't either. But we hope they're in a better place, don't we? But if they haven't obeyed Yahweh's word, they're not. And only Yahweh knows where they really are. So Jezebel teaches faith and grace without obedience. And Delilah is constantly working on them. Working on Yahweh's people day in, day out to give into their fleshly lusts. Oh, you don't need to fast. Just to eat all you want. And we wonder why this is Fat Eat Street USA. I could probably lose about 15 more pounds myself. So let's stop and remember fasting through the week. If the Pharisees can fast two days a week, two 24-hour, two 24-hour periods a day, except our righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, maybe we need to go two and a half days or more. Think about that one. So it, Yahweh's people don't need to give in to their fleshly lusts and desires. We are to mortify the deeds of our flesh daily, especially as situations come up in our life. You know, we could all learn to bridle our tongue more. I think so many times, uh, who can tame the tongue? <laughs> Abba, teach me to bridle my tongue. Teach me on, and situations come up, <laughs> I get plenty of practice, believe you me. 
Now remember, the assembly of Thyatira had charity, faith and service and works and patience, but not obedience to the code of ethics within the boundaries of Yahweh's word. And this is where Jezebel kicked in and took over. It wasn't the paint on her face that made her evil, although women are not to wear paint. She's supposed to be shamefaced. Shamefacedness means she's not to draw attention to herself. She's to be bashful, eyes lowered, bashful. Yeah, you've come a long way, baby, in the wrong direction. And if you live next door to the assembly of Theratira, you would think that they were heaven bound because you'd see their love. You'd see their service and their works and their faith and their patience. And you would just be enthralled with the assembly at Thyatira. Yes, you would. If you did not truly know how to study and what to obey in Yahweh's word. Because his word is still not multiple choice. The spirit of Jezebel does not love correction. Let me repeat that one. The spirit of Jezebel does not love correction. That's where we get rebellion. And rebellion is as the sin of what? Witchcraft. And witchcraft rules and reigns in this nation. Do you know that when our, that when our present president was first elected, that for the first time in history, witches danced on the White House lawn? Ho, ho, ho. You've come a long way, baby, in the wrong direction. The spirit of Jezebel does not love correction. Jezebel's spirit mocks, makes fun of the strictness of the obedient, making excuses why she doesn't have to obey, yielding to the little foxes that spoil the vine, stating that it is more important to focus on love and faith and grace and mercy and we're supposed to have all that too but obedience comes first and when we are truly obedient because we love him then that charity and faith and grace and mercy will still be there what is our real duty in this life do you know Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Elohim. Who's Elohim? Yahweh. And keep, obey his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Or for us women. This is a women's broadcast. Yet Delilah keeps pushing and shoving. And Jezebel doctrine of disobedience as situations arise makes excuses why it's okay to disobey Yahweh's word, why it's okay to wear men's pants, why it's okay to cut off those long locks of hair, that you're supposed to wear the long hair of veil because of the angels, that you have power on your head. It's not that veil, that piece of cloth that's put on your head that gives you power, I got no problem with women that want to wear a veil. But you're not supposed to cut your hair either. Not trim, not shave, or let the rats chew it off. We all must make our calling and election sure, ladies. Speaking the same thing. Not allowing any diversions from the word to cause us to walk in deception. A lie. Yahweh's calling for a holy and separated bride, pure in heart, obedient in spirit, submission against her carnal nature that would pull her into the clutches of false doctrine of any kind. Jezebel and Delilah refuse instruction. Isaiah 1 and 19. If, 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 if ye be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, 
You shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of Yahweh hath spoken it. Proverbs 8.32 Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Blessed are they that obey my ways. Jezebel and Delilah do not love, they do not have a love of the truth. They do not have a love for the truth. 2 Thessalonians 2.10 And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. In other words, they were presented truth, refused truth, and now they're not, they won't be saved. That's what that verse is saying. The next verse says, and for this cause, for what cause? Because they didn't receive a love of the truth. Elohim, who's Elohim? Yahweh, as in hallelujah, Yah, the short form of Yahweh. And for this cause, what cause? The cause that they received not a love for truth, but loved. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. For what cause? <laughs> because they didn't love the truth. For this cause, Elohim, Yahweh, shall, shall, shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. May Abba have mercy on all who desire to stay strict and straight within and without, not ashamed to be bold and brazen to stand for all truth to those that would compromise the word with the deceitfulness of love, faith, grace message without obedience. Yahweh spoke to Jerry some years ago in a visitation that he would see many come and go, referring to those baptized in Yahweh's name filled with the Holy Spirit because they had listened to the seducing spirits of Jezebel and Delilah, giving heed to doctrines of devils, doctrines that you don't have to obey no more. You don't have to obey the law. It is so very important to abide in the doctrines of real truth, not allowing the enemy to pervert Yahweh's word in watering it down to Jezebel's and Delilah's level of merely love, faith, and grace without steadfast obedience. Yahweh gave me a vision last week and a few weeks ago showing me some of Yahweh's people going astray in their own spirit instead of Yahweh's spirit. The following week, I was shown a large black rat struggling to come through the foundation of a building. I was fighting and fighting and fighting that black rat, pushing with all my strength from entering the foundation. But with a sudden burst, that black rat did come through the foundation, and I forcefully grabbed that nasty black rat by the back of the neck with my right hand and started choking the life out of that filthy vermin until it died. I pondered and fasted and prayed about that visitation for nearly a week, and today Abba brought it before me that that rat is Jezebel's doctrine of charity, faith, and grace with no obedience. That women could wear anything that they want. Women can dress any way they want. Women can cut off the long locks of hair that Yahweh gave them for their glory. How long is long? Have you ever looked it up? The word long? In some versions, it means to its fullest extent. Protruding down like a veil. Uncut untrimmed, not sheared or shaven because of the angels. A woman must have power on her head because of the angels. Satan knew what he was doing back during the First World War when he got women out of the home. Women are to be keepers at home. He knew what he was doing when he was taking all the men out to war and getting women to operate machines to where they tied up that, those long locks of hair on top of their head. And old Delilah and Jezebel slipped in there and said, Well, there's no difference in cutting it off because it's just as long as wearing it on top of your head. That's what Jezebel and Delilah teach. 
Women's long, beautiful locks of glory do not belong piled on top of their head. They are to wear them along when they pray and prophesy, so that they might have power on their head because of the angels. Look, there's a lot of things that many women that I have known through the years who had the same exact experience of intense love for their salvation, for their creator, for his great sacrifice, that they didn't mind doing anything because Yahweh had so graciously delivered them from their old ugly life. But as the years rocked on and trials and fiery trials and hurts, the honeymoon waxed cold and women left their first love started cutting off their long locks of hair because somebody hurt their poor little feelings. You know, sometimes Yahweh allows things to happen in our lives to build character. Yahweh allows things to come our way to test us, to see if we're going to stay with it, to see if we're going to be strong in His Word. And our final test of fire is soon to come. Yahweh showed me Many years ago, a map of the United States of America and a black hand came out from the north, picked up our White House, overturned it, and the next scenes were foreigners firing upon Americans. This is a true vision that Yahweh Almighty gave to me. What do you expect of a nation who has turned her back on Yahweh Almighty? And anything goes. Filth and perversion are made law, while Yahweh's law gets thrown in the trash. If you want to know why Yahweh is the only name your Elohim, your God Messiah ever had, please write to Jerry or Kathy. Write to Jerry or Kathy. We mail out free audio CDs, free scriptural literature on why. Write to Jerry or Kathy. Our mailing address is 775 Mick. Donald Road. Again, 775 McDonald Road. Covington, Georgia. Covington, Georgia. That's the United States of America, Georgia. Our zip code is 30014. Again, 30014. Or we invite you to call us at 770784 Zero seven zero three. That number again is seven seven zero seven eight four zero seven zero three. If you have access to online, we cordially invite you to go to the YouTube site and watch my husband teach from the Hebrew Scriptures and your King James Version how the name of Yahweh was removed from the King James Version and how the name of Yahweh Hebraically should have come over to the New Blood Covenant and not Jesus, Jesus, or any kind of a Shua name. Please go to the YouTube site and type in Hour of Truth. Again, type in Hour of Truth 777. You must type in Hour of Truth 777. Click on it. You can watch uh, our broadcasting from uh, January of 2012 through about the third week in October 2012. Ladies, the purpose of my broadcast is to provoke you to study, to provoke you to repentance. And the hand of Yahweh's arm is still outstretched with mercy to those who will sincerely, with a heart of humility, a, a humble heart, diligently search the scriptures to see if what I share with you is not so. It's the truth. We must want the truth, no matter how it conflicts with our human lifestyle. We want Yahweh's lifestyle for us, not our own. Until next week at the same time, ladies, may Yahweh richly encourage you to search His Word diligently so that you might obey, not just hear with your ear, but obey His Word with a circumcised heart. Judgment is soon to come on this nation. It's right around the corner. 
We don't know when, but we better be ready to meet our Maker. Until next week, Shalom.